Hello everyone, I'm Alessandro Zamparelli and uh, I want to present with this video the second class that we're going to take with uh, Blender. This is going to be an intermediate class and uh, while things are going on, we're going deeper and deeper inside the computational aspect of what you can do inside Blender. You will see two different aspects. On one side, we will work on a catenary system using closed simulation inside Blender. On the other side, we will work on the tessellation aspect in order to articulate the surface and create some interesting effect using the tessellation inside tissue. This is something that we have been explored previously during the visiting school in Dubai in 2019. And the topic was additive stereotomies. And uh, we started experimenting, for example, the different shapes of a component that can work as a system of interlocking element. And we also study how we can articulate it on different direction. And combining those studies with the catenary studies that we did during the workshop, the students, the participants were able to create a very interesting object with a different uh, aspect of design that was used for uh, developing some specific direction and uh, the model that we built with those interlocking elements was actually assembled without the use of the glue. So we just used some internal wires for keeping the connection between the arches with some tension and then we assembled the, all the different arches without using any additional glue. So the process in this case is going to be focused a lot on tissue that is the add-on that I'm developing for Blender, and it will be combined with some tenory system. And we will see how playing with mesh modeling software inside Blender allows a lot of flexibility in order to create articulation of the surfaces and study different possible effects of how they react to the gravity in order to generate surfaces and structures that work efficiently according to the gravity. The principle follow the, basically the idea of a catenary system. So if you have a structure that works with a pure tension, like the hanged chain, then if you invert all the forces of the system, you will get an inverted geometry, but also a geometry that works efficiently to the inverted forces applied to that. And uh, working with uh, mesh modeling, we will be able to develop a system that follows specific uh, loops, a specific direction. And we will see also that different components will behave differently according to those directions, according to the uh, isotropic or anisotropic feature of the component, we can achieve different effect. And some component also allows the uh, connection in two direction or just one possible direction. And, each time changing the property of the component will give different result on the final surface. But uh, most important, if we want to assemble a system that doesn't use uh, any additional material for the connection, it's interesting to experiment with different shapes of the component in order to allow the interlocking interface between them. So a positively for the workshop that we did in Dubai, I developed a specific feature for tissue in order to simplify the process of creating geometry that allow this interaction and interconnection between the part. Also, the, most of the tools that use the replication of uh, element along the surface are based on the box morphing effect. And these actually have a, a, a small limitation that Basically, you have to choose between a big or edgy component that follow the surface or smaller but more smooth result. So usually, if you want to keep the smoothness of the surface of the geometry that you're making, you have to choose to make smaller component. But the dimension of the component is supposed to be part of the design and not a limitation of a tool. For that reason, in a tissue, it's possible to use uh, the patch mode for the tessellation that actually create this disconnection between uh, the size of the component and uh, the number of subdivisions that you use. So this allows to work uh, with a topology, but in the same time to achieve smoothness, even if you want to keep a bigger component on top of your surface. Those are some examples of what is possible to do with tissues. So we will see both interlocking behavior, both direction along the loops, and also how to achieve the smooth tessellation that follow nicely the surface, even having big components that follow that geometry. 
and uh, working with the loops also allows to make some consideration for example according to the fabrication or the assembly strategy that you may want to use moving to blender in particular blender 2.83.1 that is the latest version we will see how we can use the mesh modeling tool that we have inside blender in order to articulate a geometry that starts from a very simple and flat configuration like this and then using the cloth simulation allows to generate according to an inverted direction of the gravity this structure that works efficiently according to the applied gravity in the opposite direction so we will see how we can easily manipulate the starting geometry in order to for example move and change the anchor points to of our cloth simulation and see how this affect the final design of our geometry. This will be part of the design together with the articulation of the loops and the generation of a specific geometry that allow to make a nice tessellation later on in, on applied to this specific object. So just for giving you a very simple example of how we can make a tessellation on top of this geometry, we can, for example, create a very simple plane use some inset phase in the lead to internal phase then we can extrude all the phases of this system we can make some uh, small changes in order to change a little bit the shape of our geometry we can for example select this loop scale a little bit we can define if we want some crease we can use later for a tessellation and uh, then we can for example add uh, some cut along some of the sides and we can increase the resolution of our mesh in order to make it easier to adapt nicely to a curved surface so in this case for example we have our geometry and what you will see by default is that according to uh, the number of faces of your tessellation of your base geometry you are gonna change the number of components that will follow that geometry. So if I just use a regular tessellation of this component using tissue tessellate, we will see something that looks like that. And uh, those components are quite edgy because they're, this is just a linear interpolation inside the faces of the object. But with tissue, it's actually possible to use the patch tessellation that allows to keep the component bigger according to the topology of the mesh but also at the same time to make them smoother so this is now just enough to increase the number of subdivisions in order to get a nicer adaptation of those components at this point we can do some post-processing on the object for example make it smoother using some uh, extra subdivision surface on top of that in order to make our component of course this is just a very simple example but i want to show you some of the examples of what i was thinking to do during this class so let's hide those geometries and here you will see some some of the examples we can go to the rendering cycle that makes them a bit nicer so you can see that this geometry is actually made by components that are interlocked to each other we are all separated it means that those elements are actually different from the others we are not physically connected but their shape allows to interlock them and create a complex system of components or even more complex when you start to articulate also the topology using the tessellation it is possible to achieve more complex effects like this one as you can see with a different color you can see the different element different modules and you can see how the topology is articulated with this weaving effect and at the same time the component are made in order to interlock to each other this is of course a more challenging geometry also for a possible construction but we will focus more on the geometrical opportunities of what we can do with a catenary system and tessellation the structural part is of course another story so i hope that you like this topic and hope to see you soon during the intermediate class 
of uh, Blender with uh, Meal Live Academy. Goodbye.